To stop the spread of soil transmitted helmets, our group has decided to educate the people of Uganda, Africa on sanitation and proper food preparation. As was said before, this disease is spread through contaminated soil, so we want to help eliminate the contaminated dirt by teaching these people how to wash their hands, how often to wash their hands, and when to wash their hands. We want to teach in a way that is engaging for both adults and children. Proper steps on how to wash your hands is very simple and can be taught in a fun and easy way. From my own experience, I have learned that when learning with music, it is easier to remember information. To make the kids excited and eager to wash their hands, we would teach them the ABC rule. We would teach them that while soap and water is important when washing your hands, the time that you take to wash your hands is also very important. We would have them all practice washing their hands while singing the ABCs together to show the proper duration. Hopefully with a fun song, they will remember to wash their hands when they should. We will teach them to wash their hands before they eat, before they prepare food, before they put their hands in their mouth for any reason, and after going to the bathroom. I had the opportunity last summer to visit and go to Uganda, Africa for a couple of weeks, and I noticed that a lot of the people and children did not know when it was appropriate to wash their hands. They would begin cooking without washing their hands. They would also cook food before they washed it. Their main source of food is things that they grow in their own garden, so mostly everything has been in the dirt. Since this disease is spread through contaminated dirt, it is crucial to wash these fruits and vegetables before preparing them or eating them raw. We are also going to focus on teaching the children how this disease is spread and how important it is for them to wash their hands after they have been outside playing or handling food. A lot of children sit around playing in the dirt all day and then come in to eat without washing their hands. This is a way that soil transmitted helmets could be spread and it could be also easily avoided. We believe that a lot of children just don't know that this disease is caused by contaminated dirt, and if they did, they'd be more careful and wash their hands more frequently. I researched other organizations that are trying to help cure the spread of soil transmitted helmets. An organization that I found that's doing this is called WHO, which stands for World Health Organization, and they're working on treatment programs in different countries. They give relief to people who are suffering from, suffering from soil transmitted helmets. While I think this is important since so many people are sick from this disease, um, I think it's equally important for people to educate other people on how this is spread so that it can be prevented. While it seems that there are organizations out there helping with the disease, there doesn't seem to be a lot that are working on the preventative side. Our group found that preventing it is an easier way to do thing to do than treating it once they are already sick. Um, one great thing about our intervention is that besides traveling to Uganda and getting to these villages, this intervention doesn't cost anything. We are merely teaching techniques and easy ways to prevent the disease and aren't having to pay for anything elaborate. My name is Haiti V. Lindsay and I will be talking about the need of an education and prevention intervention and on the huge problem soil transmitted helminthes really is. As Michaela stated, we will be implementing a how to stop the spread of soil transmitted helminthes through educating adults and children in villages on first how and why it is spread and second what they can do to prevent soil transmitted helminthes through proper hygiene. Soil transmitted helminthes in Uganda is reported based on a data for 20 to 185 school children from 271 schools. The overall prevalence of Ascherosis lumbersodius Tracheus, trichuria, and hookworm was 6.3%, 5.0%, and 43.5% respectively. The prevalence of a lumbar coldus and T, trichuria, was unevenly distributed in the country with prevalence greatest in southwestern Uganda, whereas hookworm was generally more homogeneously disturbed. Based on preliminary costs, analysis of an ongoing school-based control program, the financial delivery cost per school child treated with albendozole is estimated to be between US dollar 0.4 and 0.8 in different districts. This is by publicmed.com. As we can see, the spread of soil transmitted helminthes seems to be on the rise, where there are organizations like WHO that do combat it after an individual 
has it and deworming comes in form in form who and their treatment programs as Michaela expressed however we do want to help combat it before children and families are infected so that they do not have to go through deworming medications and so on soil transmitted helminth infection is found mainly in areas with warm warm and moist climates where sanitation and hygiene are poor including in temperature temperate zones during warmer months these sths are considered neglected tropical diseases and tds because they inflict tremendous disability and suffering yet can be controlled or eliminated through the cdc i read that infections caused by soil transmitted helminthes are chronic and disabling amongst children and families they include roundworm whipworm and hookworm these parasites deprive the human body of vital nutrients like vitamin A and iron and weaken the immune system of young children during crucial stages of growth infected children often suffer with painful symptoms such as swollen stomachs diarrhea and inflamed intestines keeping them from attending school these worms are affecting more than 1.5 billion people based on estimates by the world health organization soil transmitted helminthes live in the intestine and their eggs are passed in the feces of infected persons if an infected person defecates outside near bushes in a garden or field or if the feces of an infected person are used as fertilizer eggs are disposed on soil ascaris and hookworm eggs become infective as they mature in soil people are, are infected with ascaris and whipworm when eggs are ingested they can happen when hands or fingers that have contaminated dirt on them are put in the mouth by consuming vegetables and fruits that have not been carefully cooked washed or peeled hookworm eggs are not ineffective they hatch in soil releasing larvae immature worm that mature in to a form that can penetrate the skin of humans hookworm infection is transmitted primarily by walking barefoot or on contaminated soil one kind of hookworm anclostoma dondonale not sure if i said that correctly can also be transmitted through the ingestion of larvae and this is all from the information and stuff i have gathered from the center of cdc as we can see this is a huge issue that can be addressed and possibly stopped before it starts through proper hygiene better water sources and better ways of finding or building specific places outside away from good drinking water for defecation however our focus will be on proper hygiene through the proper way of washing of the hands as stated before before rolling with the intervention and implement it, implementing it we would meet up with the ministry of health and explain our hygiene and sanitation intervention we have created then we would ask them if we could be considered to work with them in the Uganda sanitation fund program which is an ongoing program that has started that has started the Uganda sanitation fund USF is a program through which financial support grants from the global sanitation fund GSF is provided. It is a 5-year long program funded by the Water Supply and Sanitation Collaborative Council WSSCC managed by United Nations Office for Project Services UNOPS. This program aims at creating a robust demand for sanitation to the point that people seek out creative ways to install toilets in their com communities and stop open defecation. The purpose of USF is increasing development and utilization of sanitation and hygiene facilities with the goal of contributing to reduction of morbidity and mortality rates due to sanitation related disease among the people in the program program E area. A key result area is stopping open defecation throughout the program E area. Ministry of Health Republic of Uganda 
With this program, we can get the backing we need to provide clean water and bathroom type ordeal so that in this form we can educate individuals in Uganda even if our intervention doesn't cost anything, individuals on this behalf can have access to those things that they will need so that education, so that that education that they acquire through us can help them in the prevention of getting soil transmitted helminthes. Because this is an intervention that is ongoing, we can help make it better through our knowledge we have gained and teach and educate individuals to spread awareness and prevent the problem for, for, from further spreading. With working with Ministry of Health, we can make a bigger and long lasting difference. We can also work with the Ministry of Education and work with the educators along with individuals of the village so when we are gone, this can continue to flourish. Also, people from the villages will be more encouraged to learn and get educated on the prevention methods if they see that even the teachers teaching their children are involved. We would also outreach and include the Uganda Village Project. They have been running since 2003 to promote public health and sustainable development in the rural communities of the marginalized district in Southwest Africa. Or Southeast Africa, I'm sorry about that. We believe they would be a good to work with along with the Ministry of Health for the backing of better water and bathrooms for the village. Ministry of Education to include local educators to continue on with this intervention when we are gone. And the Uganda Village Project to help them further spread awareness and education. With working with these three, we can become a fantastic four and make that big change come about in stopping soil transmitted helminthes through our intervention.